four. Back. Due to phenomenal demand, the Backstreet Boys are back. The record-breaking DNA World Tour continues. Brian, Kevin, Howie, Nick, and AJ. Backstreet Boys. Quit playing games with FedEx Forum, Friday, September 9th. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. For more, check BackstreetBoys.com. Lieutenant, can you tell us what happened today? Our officers responded to a crash on I-40 westbound this morning. The driver of a pickup truck lost control of the vehicle, veered left, and went into a ditch. 911, what's your emergency? We've been in a crash. Please send someone. My fiancé is hurt. A front seat passenger was wearing a seatbelt. She survived without injury. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly com slash community slash education today. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Hey, here's your four grilled cheese double burgers. Enjoy your Sonic. So, could you ever overachieve something? Can you overachieve? No, over not overachieve. Overachieve. Over <laughs> What do you get when you combine two cheesy, craveable classics? The Sonic Grilled Cheese Double Burger. Made with three slices of melty American cheese layered between two 100% pure seasoned beef patties and held together by thick Texas toast. Try one half price when you order in the Sonic app. Exclusion supply. See app for details. Limited time only of participating Sonic drive-ins. Hear that? That's the plumpest, juiciest hot dogs you've ever seen getting their grill on. But we both know what'll make it sound even better. Oh, yeah. It's a Pepsi to go with your hot dog. Because when you're chomping on America's favorite meal, relish, mustard, and onions perfectly blending into a crescendo of flavor, there's only one thing that makes everything about that moment better. A cold, refreshing Pepsi. See what I mean? It's like music to my ears. Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Ah. Live from FedEx Forum, this is The Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. CityMedia.com. It's Chris Farnan. Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. It is the Tuesday, July 19th, 2022 edition of the show. Today on the show, last night I was actually rather entertained by what was on television. As the home run derby was on, NBA, uh, NBA MLB All-Star Game is going to be going on tonight. In the absence of basketball... It is filled with drama, and we have a little that we can get to today on the show. We'll get to all the news and notes of the day. SEC Media Days is going on down in Atlanta. Rob Fisher is covering it for Grind City Media. He's going to check in with us and tell us what we need to know. Let's do it. Turn it up.
hope everybody's having a good day. All right. Uh, as I mentioned, we are going to check in with Rob Fisher uh, from SEC Media Days. There was no lack of news that came out of that yesterday, including some of the local coaches speaking up. I will get to that. Last night, the Major League Baseball Home Run Derby was on. It was going to be followed by the Derek Jeter documentary, which I thought, hey, I don't know why on this uh, DVR they have the home run derby at two hours. There's never been a two-hour home run derby ever, but instead it was like three hours. So whoever taped the Derek Jeter documentary uh, was going to wake up this morning and be rather disappointed when they got the last hour of the home run derby instead. But then the Jeter thing started too late. I actually was – I was like, you know what? If this thing's on at 9 o'clock, I'll watch it. There's no chance it was going to be on at 9 o'clock. So maybe I'll go back and – uh, get around to it uh, as they've got the Jeter documentary that's going on on ESPN. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John, John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Band, the Senior Sack, a.k.a. John the Backhole, John the Bearcat, a.k.a. the Grim Roser, John Hustle, Johnny Spurgis, Johnny Deckard, a.k.a. John Cap. What up? One thing I have been pretty good at, sports gambling-wise, is the home run derby. You did. And almost again last night. Almost got it last night. Again. I thought you did. I sprayed the board. I had Rodriguez. Yeah. I had Soto. Yeah. So tell the people, we, yesterday on the show, I did say polar bear for Alonzo again. But then when I went and looked at his odds, it's like, okay. Roser, yeah, yeah, I can he attest. Was, he, he, was, gave, he told us he was going to take plus 850. Mm-hmm. I sent the Rodriguez. text. I did. Julio Rodriguez is who I, I ended up taking. I won a Rodriguez one. I bet Rodriguez over Seager in the first round. Okay. Got right. that one. And then I bet him to make the final. And okay. that was good plus money. Yeah, that, and he did yeah. make the final. And he did have that. So uh, I got robbed. Absolutely robbed on one. I'll tell you about in a moment. Uh Devin Walker's here. He is Diamond. the microphone Diamond. mangler, Senor Quasadilla, Mr. Mad Navo Joe. He is the reporter. Uh, I know you got you to talk about how you got robbed, but let me knock it out the park. Albert Pujols. Shout out, Wale. Oh, Albert Pujols last Shout night. Albert Pujols, baby. The funniest thing ever was Albert Pujols hitting 13 home runs in the second round against Kyle Schwarber. Yeah. Kyle Schwarber. And then... 13 can't win anything. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can't win anything. You got the three minutes and you got the extra time. You didn't win anything with 13. So both all-star teams, everybody, it was like a meet and greet yeah. with Albert Pujols. Like it was circle. like a king's welcome. Yeah. Yes, and they it's all – prayer circle. They're like, yeah, let's all prayer circle. circle and everybody's <laughs> high-fiving. Everybody's hugging him. Everybody's loving on him. Everybody's like, thanks so much for doing this. Oh, my God, it was amazing to get to see a hero. Guy that's been swinging like that for 20 years. Yeah. And then friggin' Carl, Kyle Schwarber hits 13 home runs, and Pujols has to get back up there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, damn, man. <laughs> and then beat Schwarber, so he has to go again. And then in the next round, the funniest thing ever, I don't know if you caught this, yeah. with the next round when he was uh, he was going up against, I guess it was Rodriguez yeah. and – or Soto. It was Soto. It was Soto, Soto the second right? Round, yeah. It was Soto, and the people started putting up all the memes of, like, the uh, Juan Soto knowing he has to do away with Albert Pujols, oh, whatever, because that's, like, his hero. Yeah. yeah. The best one was the video. I can't remember who put it up. Was it the Shawn Michaels? Shawn Michaels yeah. kicking. I'm sorry. I'm All so sorry. Players. I love yeah. you. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Shawn Michaels <laughs> kicking Ric Flair in the head <laughs> and ending his career. Yeah. And so they were saying that's what Juan Soto was having to do to Albert Pujols. Yeah, so then in the middle of that round, I don't know if you caught this, but Pujols like takes his time out, and he's obviously like he's done swinging. He's, he's like enough. His son, AJ – Comes up with the with the massage gun and starts massaging his forearm during the timeout. I was like, "That's real old man yeah, stuff." Yeah, it is. That's real old man stuff. The announcer, I thought it was hilarious as hell. They were like, "Yeah, like 
Soto, Acuna, Rodriguez, those guys have never used a massage gun in their life. <laughs> this guy's using it at the timeout of yeah. a home run derby. They're like massaging his forearm. Real old man stuff. Yeah, yeah. But as someone is. who uh, just lived and died with pool hosts for so many years, it was super cool to see him in that. Yeah, he's a fr- I mean, he's and, a legend. He's an all-timer. He's a legend. And also, like... The sure. farthest thing from embarrassing himself. Exactly. Yeah. He didn't pretty embarrass good, himself at all. Pretty and, good and he also played. Look at the guy. Here's the. Here's, <laughs> oh, his bar stool. Yeah. Put up the one I'm Soto sorry. having to take him out. And he also played in an era where several of the other big time hitters admitted or were caught. That's right. Using perform. And he never was. Nope. I mean, he never, never and, implicated and never implicated. Yeah. And, and he played in an era with, you know, All he played with Bonds. He played with Manny Ramirez. He played with Alex Rodriguez. Over and, 600 you know, something home runs. One kid. of the all time great players. Yeah. As a kid, I remember watching him play at the Redbird Stadium. We I was the there Bird. that night. I remember. I would never forget that he won the, uh, the PCL for him. I was sitting right behind home plate. It was awesome to get to see him yeah. last night, just participating in that and having a showing. Like, he, yeah. he didn't embarrass himself at all. And I was worried about that. I now, was like, oh, man. Like three home runs. Home run derby. <laughs> home run derby. That's a tough one, now, right? Like now. when you got these young guys. They said that was the craziest stat I saw last night. That Julio Rodriguez, they said he is. He was, when Albert Pujols hit his first major league home run, that dude was three months old. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about it in that context, <laughs> that's it, that's when he hit his first major yeah. league home run. Yeah, a three month old. A three month old. This guy hit like thirty something home runs in the first round. It was yeah. awesome, dude. I, I knew about. I'll gauge about my girlfriend. My girlfriend was locked in when she was locked in watching. I was like, yeah, this is gonna be fun. But she was and, like, oh my god, he's hit so many home. Runs. I was like, yeah. And you see the some guy, and you see the guys, the stars that weren't even in the home run derby yeah, this year. Vlad. Whether whether it's Vlad, Tatis, Aaron Judge. Yep. Like the, baseball does, Otani. Has, Otani, Otani yeah. Baseball does have some young stars that have what swag to them. For you sure, know? they do. Wow. They For absolutely, sure. they absolutely. Do. Now Devin's pick, yeah, he bro. almost didn't even make it because he almost got set on fire. Bro, I don't, what's wrong with this? Did man, you see bro? that video? What do you, What do you do? When they were, I guess they they announced them or whatever. They brought everybody up there. They had like pyrotechnics going off and. It like got Acuna and he like freaked out, moved out of the way, almost really? got set on fire. Like yeah. I got a bad showing last have night. You I seen was not happy about it. Acuna, have you seen the chain he's gonna wear for the All Star game tonight? No, I saw the one he wore last night, the thirteen. It was pretty dope. No, it's got this gorilla on it. You gotta oh, see this. Let me look this Just up, type. Well. In, you can find it on Twitter. Just type in Acuna chain, and it'll be on there. He spent a fortune. I think they said it's over a hundred thousand dollars. It's this diamond encrusted chain. It's got this big gorilla on it. Yo, and he's wearing it. 140,000? Yeah. And he said he's wearing it tonight during the All Star game. La Bista. Is what what does it say? La Bista. La Bista. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. La Bista. Yo, this is, it means the beast. Decked in 12 carats. It means the beast. <laughs> La Bista. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's decked out in 12 carats of emerald shaped VVS diamonds and six carats of round, brilliant rocks and a gorilla in embe- enameled on top. See if they can find that down in the studio so we can try to put it up on the screen for people that are watching. Yeah. It's uh if you if you if you just type in Acuna chain on Twitter, you can find it. That's it pops up in two seconds. Insane. Oh yeah. I saw it this morning and I was like, oh wow. That's pretty He's amazing. gonna wear that thing tonight <laughs> at the All Star game. La Bista. That thing looks heavy. Yeah, it looks heavy. A hundred and forty thousand dollars. That's what he spent on. Light it. work. La Bista. Shout out Robert Acuna. Yeah. Robert, I should have bet on him though. He had a bad showing last night. His name's Ronald. Derby. Ronald. His name's not Robert. <laughs> look, at, <laughs> look at La Bista. <laughs> oh yeah. That's hard. What man. a chain. I can't wait to see it in person tonight. That's gonna be hard. <laughs> shout out shout out my boy Robert Ronald Acuna. <laughs> Robert Acuna. What is wrong yeah, with you? Like a man. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a robber. What? No, he doesn't. It was fun to watch last night, though. I gotta be honest. I I was entertained by it. Yeah, William sure. was watching it with me, and certainly the Rodriguez kid put on a big show. Uh, Soto's fun. They got 
They got a lot of good players. Yeah. You know, it, it, them showing Alonzo at one point in between rounds, he's out, he's in the weight room deadlifting, dead and then the next round they show him like meditating, <laughs> and it's like, all right, dude, yeah, you're taking this super serious. The announcer was like, he's the first one to take it this serious in a long time. Oh yeah, like, he, he wanted was, to three peat. Yeah. yeah, he wanted to three peat, and the, they help everything. You see, what he's saying he's like, he's they're like, you know, you seem really locked in, you know. Whatever. Buster only asked us a question. He's like, yeah, I'm locked in. And then it got awkward, and he was like, you know, why does this mean so much to you, whatever, going for the third in a row, whatever. And he's like, it's me and my wife, we're going to donate the money to the Alonzo Family Fund or, you know, whatever, the Alonzo, you know, the, the charity that they yeah, got. Yeah, yeah. He's like, we're going to help some uh, – we're going to help some families, some parents, some kids, and some – Stray animals or something. I'm like, but the Alonzo Fund does everything. Yeah. Like, you help animals and people. <laughs> Usually you got to like, one of them, yeah, they're just going to yeah. <laughs> Pete Alonzo is just helping everybody. Yeah. I was kind of root for him at that point. I'm like, God, this guy's going to help humans and animals Good if guy, he wins. Good guy. The other guys are just going to go buy La Bista chains. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> Rodriguez, his salary is like, what, 700K? Oh, no, yeah. He's a, oh, he's a rookie. He was going to make his, like, he was going to make more in the Derby than he was going to make. His whole yeah, he's a he rookie. Derby. Oh no, he's a stud. Like oh, he's yeah. he's a legit. He's like, the new A Rod. Oh, he's, he's A Rod. Yeah, J Rod. Yeah, they call J Rod playing yeah. in Seattle. Like he's what he's hit over thirty home runs already, hadn't he? Oh God, yeah. has he? he? I, no. believe, I think he has. He's hit over thirty. No way, not at the break. Because oh. Judge has got that, and Judge is like on a Maris pace. He has. Uh, oh no, he's got sixteen. 16. That's Cap. Hell you see thirty. Golly, <laughs> that means he's on pace Roger. to hit thirty. He's on pace to hit thirty. That's, that's which is not even. It's not, not even good. Thirty home runs. So what? Whatever. Cap, you can give me the cap. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I deserve the cap. Judge has it because yeah. Judge is on like Maris pace. Yeah. That's the one I would love to see right now. In a, in a thing like the Derby, I would love to see Aaron Judge. It, he's strong. Like it, Peter he is in a contract year, and he is going to get. Hey, oh, the, yeah. Aaron Judges? Yeah, he's in yes. a contract here. Yeah. I mean, why didn't you do the Derby? Are you scared? I don't know. He's done it before. Yeah, some guys, you know, I mean, there's some tires them out. Yeah. Or they, yeah. you know, it's, a, it's a lot. They, you know, like, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the All-Star Weekend where some guys, obviously nobody does a dunk contest anymore. But right. there's just there's so much that they plan for these guys throughout yeah. the All-Star Weekend now between appearances and yeah. doing right by your sponsors and then, like, you know, they're out in L.A. right now. And there's, like, there could be quite a few guys that could do it that aren't doing it. Um, but they had a good field last night. They yeah, did. They yeah. did. It was good competition. I actually – I like home run derbies. I think it's the yeah, best. I, think it's I the like best home run derbies. I think, I think they're the, fun. The best All-Star competition, yeah. to be honest with you, to, no. to watch. Like, uh, for somebody that played basketball all his life, like, I'm dunk contest is cool. I like the three point. Three point is cool. That's, like, you know, if yeah. it's the higher level guys doing it, like Steph, yeah. yes. Clay. That's where, like, I, that's where I would go with the NBA. Uh, yeah. Every now and then you get the good dunk contest. You've gotten the Levine and Aaron Gordon a couple times, or you got uh, who did Aaron Gordon go against last time? Derrick Jones so, Jr. Derrick Jones Jr. You get, you get those, but for the most part, like, and the NBA, I mean, the NBA could do even more with the three point contest if they wanted to. There's different, there's other different things that you could do. Like, I should really look at making that like the main event of All Star Saturday night. Yeah, three point contest. It's like a talent thing. You know what I'm saying? Well, they also Shoot get the, the they ball. also usually get the best three point shooters. Yes, yeah, they've been getting the best thing, ones. Whether you it's Curry, the, Clay. Yeah, you don't get the best dunkers, but you yeah. get the three point shooters. Bain did it last year. Devin Booker's done it. Like, you do get, yeah. Yeah. And so I I like that one and I like the I like the football ones I like the quarterback ones. Oh, it just yeah. doesn't you know, get as much promotion. No, but nobody it cares is. about them. Yeah. yeah. But I always like the quarterback ones, and I wish all the best guys did that. I remember when I was a little kid, and they they did like the and they don't do this anymore. They did that longest throw. I would love to see that with like Mahomes, Mahomes and Lamar yeah. and all those guys that like uh, Herbert. All these guys that have absolute cannons now. Yeah. And because I remember when I was a little kid, there was like a, I remember watching it like Randall Cunningham threw it like 77 yards or something. We're like, wow, these guys throw it like 90. Like you, yeah, you let yeah. Mahomes or Lamar, or one of these guys, like just let loose. <laughs> There's like videos on YouTube of these guys throwing like damn near end zone to end zone. Yeah. It's outrageous. It is outrageous. If you just let them. 
I'm going to throw it as far as I possibly can, yeah. you know? And then, like, and I would also like to see Shortest throw so I could see Garoppolo because he could, like, throw it, like, 16 yards in the air before it falls down. <laughs> He could take on, like, a decrepit Drew Brees. <laughs> he could take on, like, Broncos Peyton Manning. <laughs> All these guys. Alex, Alex Smith, another famous <laughs> Alex quarterback. Alex Smith, that's a good, yeah. <laughs> See what Alex Smith. Can you throw it 20 yards in the air? <laughs> Can Alex Smith go head to head? It would be accurate. <laughs> it would be accurate. <laughs> yeah. No, they should, because some of those, those, those NFL quarterbacks, it is crazy to see, like, just – how some of those guys, how they can just freaking put the ball wherever they want it to go. They can put the ball wherever they want it to go. Like Rodgers. Sure. Like, it's insane. Oh, oh yeah. I'll love to see him. I, I told you, I watched that one last year, and the that accuracy thing they did, Russell Wilson was like, oh, he destroyed that I was game. like, come on, bro. Yeah. He hit every target, like, yeah. immediately. And it was, like, cold and windy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, how? How are you that freaking accurate? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, right? Um... But now, I felt like last night, for the most part, you felt like you knew everybody. You know, the, the, the Rodriguez guy kind of busted on the scenes. But everybody, you know, you've heard of or know of Pete Alonzo. You certainly know Soto. You knew Acuna. Yeah. There was a couple. Corey Seager plays for the Dodgers, so people know who yeah. that is. Um, I didn't know who that number 13 dude was. Ramirez? No, the dude that lost to Pogo. Kyle no. Schwarber. I did not know who that was. Well, he was, was on the Cubs when they won yeah, the World Series. Yeah, he was on the Cubs World Series team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was on He was on the Cubs when they won the World He's Series. He's one of those dudes who hits a home run or he strikes out. <laughs> He's like Adam Dunn. He's new Adam Dunn. New, new Adam Dunn. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he's as good guy. as Adam Dunn was. But, I had no idea yeah. who that guy The rest of them, I knew who they were. I didn't know who that Schwarber guy was. And I don't watch baseball. Yeah, you don't watch yeah. baseball. <laughs> but I mean, Schwarber, I mean, it, it, most people would know Kyle Schwarber. If you, if you brought up Kyle Schwarber, they would associate him so? with, with the Cubs. Oh, with the Cubs. Okay, I'm okay, saying, they, they, yeah. yes. Okay. They would associate him with the Well, you got to remember, that was one of the most historic. It's like. I thought it was like 10 years ago, wasn't it? It was, it was a long time ago. It was like ago, 2016. But, yeah, but it was also oh, one man. of the most historic wins because they hadn't won in 100 yeah, years. And that, so, yeah. and they were down 3-2 in the series. They had that to win game did, six and seven. That one did kind of take the sports world by storm because people were paying attention because of the storyline, just like it was you know, back when the Red Sox did it for the first time, yeah. breaking the curse or whatever, that people paid attention to that one maybe more so than they have other ones that have been announced. All right, but here's what I'm going to do. I am going to ask you guys tonight. Uh, so I said pretty well knew everybody from last night's uh, festivities. Yeah. So tonight is the All-Star game. Oh, you're going to give us players and we got to tell you who they play oh, for? No. Oh, yeah. Who he play for? Oh, who yeah. He play who for? he play for? We, I think we've done this every the last yes. couple of years now. We do this. Well, well, here we go. Is it a baseball player I'm or gonna, a uh, here, yeah, We're going to start with the starters. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, American League. Alejandro Kirk. <laughs> is this a position player? Or that's a catcher. It's, it's, it's a, a catcher. catcher but, yeah. <laughs> Starting Ameri- catcher for the American League. The Detroit. Oh, oh that, that's a guardian. No, he's actually a Blue Jay. Oh! <laughs> uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Oh, oh, Blue, Jay. Blue Jays. There you go. Yeah, I, know that. I know that. Jose Altuve. That's oh, an Astro. The Astros. I know him. The short guy. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, the cheater. Yeah, yeah, the cheater. You got him so far. Yeah. Raphael Devers. Oh, that's a Red Sox. Look at Look him. At I know Raphael Devers. Yeah, I, know I am so proud. This is a friggin' baseball show. Let's go. Yeah. Info fly. Watch he's out. Gonna, he's going to get the shortstop. Let him get it. Let's see. Tim Anderson. Oh, yeah. Chicago White Sox. Let's there go! We go. Let's go, Roger. We'll say I had no idea he played shortstop. I thought he was yeah, like center field. Oh, Aaron oh, Judge. Yankee. Yankee. Mike Trout. Angels. Angels. Giancarlo Stanton. Yankee. Yeah, well, yeah I was going to say Marlins. But I- Shohei <laughs> Ota- no, that's who he used to play for. Shohei Otani. Angel. Angels. Designated hitter, legacy selection, Miguel Cabrera. Oh, Tiger. Tiger, yeah. Bro, you only missed Alejandro Kirk. Let's go, Roser! There are no Guardians? You only I missed they were good. Alejandro Kirk. That's Bro. the only one. Okay. Roser, Not bad. Ba- it's the baseball show, baby. And it's now a I baseball know who Alejandro show. Kirk Watch is. out. We're coming for that neck. Let's go. Oh, the <laughs> reserves. You would. I mean, this would be an absolute oh, no. debacle. Oh, try me. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go. Jose Trevino. Oh, that's a Guardian. It's a Yankee. Damn. <laughs> that's your favorite team. God. 
I do like the Yankees, but yeah. I, uh, Luis Arez. Uh, he's oh. a Marlin. He's a twin. Oh. Oh. Ty France. Uh, it's a Guardian. <laughs> it's a Mariner. Oh. Oh. Andres Jimenez. Oh, I've he's heard a, this name. I have heard this name. Is he a what is he, Roser? Is he a is he a guardian? He's a guardian! Let's oh, go! I knew I'd heard that name! Why are you, Let's why go. Are you so in tune with the guardians, bro? I don't know. I knew they had a couple guys. Santiago Espinal! Oh, that's a ranger. That's, that's actually a... another Blue Jay. <laughs> <laughs> How many all stars do the Blue know. Jays have? Are they good? <laughs> Jose Ramirez! Hey. Oh, oh, I know him. Is he, a, is he a Marlin? He said the American League. He's the guy who's in the Derby last night. Who does he play for? Did you say Ramirez? Is he a guardian? He's a guardian! He's a yeah. guardian! Oh, oh, I didn't know that guy. The short, chubby guy? Yeah, he's a, he's a, yeah, okay. Yeah. Corey Seager. That's a Dodger. That's a Dodger. Yeah, I know that guy. That's actually a Ranger. Oh. Corey Seager's a Ranger? Yeah, he is a Ranger. Not I a said Dodger, Dodger anymore? Earlier, yeah. Uh, Xander Bogart. Oh, that's a Red Sox. Let's go! Let's yeah, go. that's you a Red Sox. You finally got a reserve. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Byron Buxton. Oh, you uh, twin. It. Yeah, he's a twin. Go. He's a twin. Let's go, Roser. And we're not it's doing a brother, too. too. Yeah. That's a bro- what's his name? And most people think he's one of the best, if not the best, going. Yeah. Yeah. Byron? Byron Buxton. Byron Buxton. Yeah. Byron yeah. Buxton. Yep. Look him up. Kyle Tucker. I know this name. Kyle Tucker. Oh, uh, Royal. He's actually an Astro. Damn. I George Springer. Uh, That's an Astro. Used to be. Used to be an Astro. Astro. Uh, Well, he's a Guardian now. He's a Royal. He's a Royal. By the way, how are the how are the Blue Jays not a hundred? No, he's a (laughs) he's a Blue Jay. (laughs) How are are they they a hundred? What? They're not even in the like. They're not. The Yankees are winning that division by a million games. Right? They're fifty and forty three. They have like five All Stars. They have five so far. He hasn't even finished the list yet. <laughs> what is going yeah, on? Isn't it, it everybody? It. Oh, isn't everybody in the AL East over five hundred? Uh, Are the ex- Orioles except the Orioles? The Orioles, Orioles are, okay. Andrew Benintendi. Oh, Benintendi. He's um, a Tampa Bay Devil Ray. No, he used to be a Red Sox, right? He Benintendi. Oh, he. Um, oh he my God, know. he's no, a Royal. I know this he's name. He's a Royal. <laughs> uh, I was going to say a Ranger. Julio <laughs> Rodriguez. You That's know a Mariner. All right, Jordan Alvarez. That's an Astro. There you go. He's one of the best hitters in baseball. J.D. Mar- Martinez, you should get that. that. He was a Red Sox. He, he was is. a Red Sox. He oh, he's Sox. still a Red Sox. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then the rest of these, you're not going to – I mean, you're not going to get any of the pitchers. No. You, no. You'd get Garrett Cole. He's a Yankee. Yeah. And you get Otani. Yeah, he's an angel. angel. Okay. The rest that's of them, it. No that's chance. it. Yeah, you would de- – you don't – oh, Verlander? Tiger still, isn't he? Is he a- <laughs> he's an Astro. He's an Astro, huh? <laughs> he's, a he's a tiger. He played for the Tigers. All right, here's the starters. Yeah. The starters for the National League. We did good so far, Rosa. Let's go. Yeah, you did yeah, pretty I think good. We did pretty good. Better than last year. Yeah. Wilson Contreras. He's a Cub. He's a. There you go. He is the catcher. Yeah, one for one, baby. First base, Paul but, Goldschmidt. But we were there. He is a Cardinal. He is, he a, is a Cardinal. Cardinal. We, I, I believe if this is correct, Chris. We were there. At you may no wait. I think this was. Drew Compton's bachelor party. We were in Chicago at the Cubs game against the Pirates when Contreras hit his first major league home run. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, the more you know. Jazz Chisholm Jr. Oh, he's, oh, he's a, a Marlin. Marlin. He's a Marlin. He's a I'm Marlin. bought that jersey. Let's go. How do you guys <laughs> know this? I almost bought the jersey. because uh, Jazz Chisholm. It's a great name. He, he walked up at bat one time with sunglasses on, and I saw the clip on Twitter, and I was like, that's my guy. He has sunglasses on during that bat. I know this. I know, I know some Jack of these guys from seeing baseball cards. For That's how I know some of these guys are. For the culture. You guys immediately said Marlon. Yeah, <laughs> I knew yeah, I knew that one. I've heard that guy's name a lot. Manny Machado. Uh he was a is he a brave? Manny no, Machado he's not a brave. A I know. He is a Padre. He's a Padre? Oh, Wasn't he? Wow. Did, wait, didn't he used to be an Oreo? Devin. Let's like go. years ago. Oh, okay. Trey Turner. Shh. That's a Dodger. It is a Dodger. That's, yeah. Go, Roser. Acuna. Brave. Oh, brave. Jock Peterson. Dodger. Ooh. Brave. Giant. Cub. He is a giant. <laughs> He's a giant. Let's go. Third time's the charm. Mookie Betts. Oh, my guy's a Dodger. Right? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Mookie's a Dodger. Bryce Harper. Uh, he's, he's a, a Philly. He's a Philly. He is yeah. a Philly. Yeah. Legacy selection, Albert Pujols. Yeah, right. Cardinal. Then the rest of these, uh, Travis D'Arnaud. Oh, boy. That's not a real person. He's a yeah, it is. <laughs> he's, he's a, a brave. He's a he is a brave. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's Unbelievable. Go. Let's go. Pete Alonzo. Met. Met. CJ Cron. 
He's a pirate. That's a Philly. He's a Rocky. Oh, God. Oh, oh, Rocky. Rocky. Freddie what, Freeman. Shout out to Troy oh, Tulowitzki. He's, he's a Dodger. He Dodger. is. Yeah. yeah, and his agent, and hates they are, he hates his agent. Jeff and McNeil. What? That's that's not a real name. <laughs> that's just <laughs> that's, Diamondbacks. It's a Met. That's, uh. a, that's an investor. <laughs> that guy does taxes. Jake Cronenworth. Oh, I know this name. Pirate. He's a pirate? He's is a he? Padre. Oh, is it name start with a P? P? He pushing P? Oh, yeah, half credit. He pushing P? Nolan Arenado. Cardinal. Cardinal. Austin Riley. Brave. Shout out. Mississippi Zone. Mississippi Zone. Dansby Swanson. Brave. That's an ugly name. Kyle Schwarber. Uh, We saw him last night. Yeah, who does he play for? Is he still with the Cubs? Is he a national? Brave? We saw him last night, bro. I just was like, yeah, we just saw him. Oh my God, Kyle! He was wearing a red jersey. Uh, he's, a, he's a Philly. A Philly. He's a there Philly. Philly. He's a Philly. There we go. Starling Marte. A Marlin. A Pirate. A Met. Oh, oh. the Mets good. Ian Happ. He was a Philly. He a Cub. He's a Cub. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> He's so lucky. He's he a cook. No idea. <laughs> That's like me going with the. Who was the other dude? I go, is he a brave? He's a and you're like, yeah, he's a brave. William, right. William Contreras. William Contreras. Okay. Uh, Wait, I thought that was the Cubs guy. Uh-uh. He has a brother. This is, this this is, is a William you Contreras. Have no chance. It's a brave. Oh. Garrett Cooper. That's that's no. He's a pirate. No, 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 um, no, no, no. Oh, Garrett, by the way, Garrett Cooper is a Diamondback. Garrett Cooper is a Marlin. Um, <laughs> but how about this? We, Wilson Contreras is the catcher for the Cubs, and William Contreras, DH for Atlanta, and it appears that because Harper is out. Contreras will start. Therefore, the Contreras brothers will start the All Star game. Oh, oh that's cool. They are brothers, William and Wilson. Little uh, Mark and Pal thing going on here. Uh, there you go. Let's see. Cool. Do we have any of the pitchers? Can yeah, you give yeah, us some? I, yeah, there's no I, chance. Out, uh, oh, you, what, you, what, do you, what do you want? Max Freed? He's a brave. <laughs> Clayton Kershaw, you'd get. Yeah, he's a Dodger. Miles yeah. Michaelis? Is he a Cardinal? He's a Cardinal. Okay. Yeah, I've heard yeah. you mention that name before. Uh, Carlos Rondon? Oh, got to be a Diamondback. You love him. You love the Giants. Oh, it's a Giant. Yeah. How do you not know your own team, Roser? Uh, Buster Posey do not play anymore. Yeah, that's true. Tony Go- Gonsolin? No chance. No, no. Dodgers. The, Dodgers. Are there any Diamondbacks in this? Yeah. Di- doesn't every team get one? Yeah. Sandy Alcantara? <laughs> Diamondback? No, that's a Marlin. Uh, uh, why do the Marlins have so many All-Stars? Are they good? <laughs> no. Then why do they have so many all stars? I think the only other one you know is Josh Hader. I don't even know who that is. Well, he's a Diamondback. Come on, that's the guy that got in all the trouble. Remember, they pulled up his old tweets years ago. Nobody can hit him. He's the relief pitcher for the Brewers. He's oh, got okay. that long hair. Oh, no yeah, one yeah, can yeah, hit yeah, the guy. Yeah, yeah. Josh yeah, yeah, Hader. Yeah. The, Marl- the Marlins are forty-three and forty-eight, and they have thirty-five all stars. <laughs> <laughs> They've got half the NL All Star team. Them and the, them and the Blue Jays. Yeah, yeah. The whole the All Stars. By the way, they're the first brothers to to bat back to back in the All Star game in seventy five years. Wait, did Bo Bichette not make the? How was he the one Blue Jay that didn't make the All Star team? Uh, neither did uh, what's his name, Biggio's kid. Yeah, don't that doesn't he play there too? Yeah, he does. K- he it's good. got a weird first name, Caven or something, or what? What is his name? Uh, what's what's Craig Biggio's kid's name? Is it Caven Biggio? Yeah, Caven, C A V A N. Yeah, Caven. Yeah, Caven. I thought he was good. Though, I'm right? Mr. Baseball. I know what well, I'm Well, th- apparently, John Heyman has spoken. Oh, oh no. They've done some that? reporting. I was waiting for that. About what the Nationals are going to request for their 23 year old All Star Juan Soto. An entire franchise. <laughs> Pretty and close. And $700 billion. Pretty close. Okay. A team's top four prospects. Oh, my God. Oh, Young major leaguers that are already called up in the big leagues and a willingness to take Patrick Corbin's contract. I don't know who that is, but he must have a big contract. Wow. And he must suck. <laughs> and so they're like, just take his contract, too. All right. So they can't get him signed, but they are going to. Uh, they're going to ask for the moon. Yeah. They're going to try to ask for the moon in return for Juan Soto. Four, is it 14 years, half a billion dollars? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turn down 440. Imagine, 
Imagine looking at a contract that says four hundred and forty million on it and saying, "I'm good." Now nah, I'm good. I'm straight. Yeah, I'm straight I can do that. better than that. <laughs> I can do better than that. That's that's light work. I can do, I can do better than the four forty. And he can. He can. <laughs> he can. Yeah, they were saying the average is less than a lot of guys. It's, he'd be the seventeenth highest paid player in the league. Oh, is that right? On per average, yeah. Oh wow. So I understand why he turned that down. Yeah. Oh no. It is kind of crazy to think about turning down four hundred and forty million. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's, it's, you never know what's going to say. Also, uh, Kyle Newman has been canceled, by the way. Did, it, did you just say Kyle Newman's name? The NASCAR guy? Kyle Newman, no, the uh, the baseball reporter. He's a baseball reporter? I said John reporter? Heyman. Oh, yeah, Kyle Newman, DP, has been uh, – has been. Who is, who is Kyle Newman, DP? Uh, he's a baseball writer. For, for who? I see. I think he – The a, Daily Pitcher. I said, I said is he a NASCAR <laughs> driver? <laughs> Sounds he's like a, a NASCAR, NASCAR driver. Kyle Newman? Isn't that a – Ryan uh, Newman. For the Ryan Newman, Newman was Ryan Kyle Newman. Bush. I'm, yeah, just, I'm yeah, just conflating yeah, the two guys. Yeah, yeah. Sports writer for the Denver Post. Oh, Denver Post. Denver Post. Yeah. Oh, that Kyle Newman. Yeah, yeah. 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 Big fan of his work. You're me and here. I'm just yeah. dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been he's been shut. He's been canceled. Oh, what did he get canceled he's for? This canceled. this guy Kyle Newman. So remember last night when Juan Soto hit that last that that home run derby winning home run. He threw the bat in the air, beat his chest because he won the derby. Kyle Newman was not a fan of it. Oh, he did oh, need it. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here he goes. Baseball oh, no. guy. Baseball guy coming Oh, up. baseball guy. Oh, Mickey oh. Mantle would have never. Uh-oh. You know. Oh, there yeah. he goes. What a clown show. <gasps> this trend of spiking your bat and beating your chest like an ape and throwing oh, your helmet after a home run dude. is oh, ridiculous. Oh, God. Come Simple on. swag bat flip isn't enough anymore. Real baseball players act like they've been there before. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Oh He's out of God. here. Get get off my lawn, baseball guy. Oh, they got him. They got him out of here. They got him out of here. <laughs> oh, I got it. I've nobody, got it. nobody talked to Kyle. <laughs> it's still up. Oh, he deleted the tweet. Oh, he did. Uh, did you know the internet never? No, yeah. they screenshotted that immediately. No, immediately. Yeah, it was, but. Kyle oh. Newman. Oh, Kyle. He's out of here. Kyle did not think it through. He did not think it through. He, he was not happy about the bat flip. Huh? He was not happy about the bat flip. God, what is wrong with these dudes, man? How do you... Yeah. How do they not know... How do they type that and not know immediately, like, what the response is going to be? It, they don't think. Uh, here, here, I got it right here. Hours later... The Denver Post writer, Kyle Newman, deleted his racist tweet. But his beliefs are not unique, according to the Denver News Guild. They wrote a letter to Denver Post readers only a couple of months ago. Be outraged at his tweet, but also be outraged at the Denver Post. Oh, no. Yeah. And it says, uh, and then there's this whole, like, I guess some guys out there now, he's like, hey, uh, don't just pay attention to this guy. Make sure you cancel them too. <laughs> the whole post. <laughs> Real ball players act like they've been there before. Oh, Kyle. Come on, Kyle. Well, oh. hey, hasn't uh, Poor Kyle? Get him out of here. Hasn't Juan Soto won a World Series? Huh? Huh? Oh. So he has been there before. He has been there before. So he really doesn't, you know. Yeah. Kyle, know your sport. Let the guy have fun. Oh, I just looked up Kyle. I looked up Kyle. He's got what? He's got some dogs and a family. Yeah, look at this guy. Hey, wow. How, how do you poop on that? No, no, no. I'm oh. talking about Kyle Newman. Oh. I just looked up his, his oh, yeah. Twitter. Thing. You said he has a dog and a family. Yeah, he's got like a family and he's got dogs and everything. And I mean, oh my goodness. Oh, we have mad news. Oh, Kyle. We have mad news. Oh, Kyle. You have mad. Oh, no. I know what it is. Dude, don't let him say what this. Have you hey, done? somebody turn off his mic. What? Somebody show. I know what he's about to say. Roser. Somebody turn off Roser's mic. What? It's the mad news. I know Madden. News. There's Madden. News. They have released. Oh, I saw. I saw where the, what's his name joined the '99 club. The Miles Adams. Garrett. Miles Garrett. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh no no no. I know what this news is. I saw it too. This guy. The highest ranked linebackers. Oh, <laughs> Michael Parsons. Number, number one. seven. What? Michael Parsons number seven. Oh, get serious. Yeah. Devin White is number ten. Okay. By the way, let me just remind everybody: Michael Parsons as a rookie. Not one other player in the entire NFL got a single vote for Defensive Rookie of the Year. And he placed second in Defensive Player of the Year behind only T.J. Watt and ahead of Aaron Donald. That happened. So Madden can go to hell. Let's go. Barry, Devin White I'm is not buying it. This Devin year. White. <laughs> you sound like Quincy Pondexter. 
I'm not buying it. He's buying it. It's a stay. Devin Strike. White from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is number Bobby 10. Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner is number four. Oh, get out of here. With a rating fake of news. 91. Oh, my That's God. Fake news. Devondre Campbell from the Green Bay Packers oh, no. is number nine oh, with a rating of 87. Who are you? Wait, wait, wait. What is, wait, what is Micah's rating? Micah is an 88. Oh, this is gross. Yeah, that's Eric terrible. Eric Kendricks from the Minnesota Vikings is number eight. Okay. Roquan yeah, yeah, yeah. Smith. By the way, their defense is ranked like 31st in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, he's a regular Ray Lewis. <laughs> Roquan Smith. <laughs> Roquan Smith. That's a bear, right? Isn't he a bear, Roquan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was Georgia Played kid. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah. He is number six. Who cares? He, he brought this list for a reason. Darius Leonard from the Indianapolis Colts. He's awesome. He is amazing. Number five. Yeah, he's awesome. That, uh, he is worthy. He's better than number one. Bobby Wagner, number four, as we said. Levante David Jeez, is cares? number three with a rating of 92. Number two from the New Orleans Saints oh, is Demario Davis oh, with a 93. God. And the number one <laughs> ranked linebacker in all of the NFL. <laughs> All pro Fred Warner himself oh, with a rating of 94. Gross. As the great Aaron Rodgers said, Gross. everybody knows you're the best. You don't get the credit you deserve, but everybody knows you're the best. Oh, God. Oh, Aaron, he's, Aaron he's got a Rogers tattoo. Did, uh, it's because we kick their ass every time. Aaron we Rogers, always beat Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rogers never said this. Yeah, yes, he is, did. Is no, Aaron, it was yes, his brother, Roser. No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's Jordan Rodgers. That's Rogers. Jordan Rogers that said that. <laughs> And and Nick Bosa was, by the way, the worst football name ever, Fred Warner. It's all pro Fred. What are you talking about? It's all pro Fred. It's all pro Fred. It's what we call it's, it's your friend's dad's name. It's called all pro Fred. Fred Warner. We'll keep sleeping Oh, on that's him. old Fred Warner. Best linebacker in the league. Oh, God. It's the best linebacker. Micah, and, and, Micah Parsons, that is the most ridiculous ranking ever. Well, it, also Nick Bosa being the third best defensive end is ridiculous, too. Nick Bosa is the best defensive end in four. Wait, we might have – is that fake news? Oh, it came from ESPN. Oh, I'm looking at the. I see something from Dove Kelt Kleiman, NFL underscore Dove Kleiman, the top overall for LBs in Madden 23. TJ Watt, a 96 overall. TJ Watt was ranked as a defensive end. They had him as the number two defensive end. It says LB on this one, Roser. No, um, what else we got? Dad. What else we got? He's not a. Where's no. Michael Parsons? He's, oh, Michael Parsons. This, he's still down. There. Oh, so you lit. Oh, so they. But he was above. TJ Watt, Watt, Watt was above, above him. him. Was he's, above Fred he's, Warner. So he's number two. TJ Watt's a defensive end. TJ Watt wow. is listed as a defensive uh, end. Not according to Dole. Because Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is the number one defensive end, followed by TJ Watt, followed by Nick Bosa. Hey, this one's Dove Kleiman says he's number one, Roser. I believe Dole Klein. He's a You don't even guy. know who that is. Yes, I do. He probably right. He's probably friends with Kyle Newman. <laughs> <laughs> DP. I, I just I just pulled it up and I I am I'm sad to report it appears that Roser's ranking was the more legitimate one. Yeah, than Dole Klein is right. fake news. Yeah, Dole Klein is fake fake news. Oh no, Dove. Yeah, Dang, Dove. Well, hey, Greg George Kittle is a number two tight end. How does that make you feel? He was ranked number one. I thought. No. Uh, Travis Kelsey's number oh, one. Oh, no, he was number one in, according to actual, like, NFL executives, coaches, and players. Kittle was ranked <laughs> number one. Yeah, that came out, too. <laughs> For the third year in a row. The 99 club was Trent Williams from the Niners. Yeah. Devontae Trent, Adams and Miles Garrett. I don't care what anybody says. Trent Williams is the best player in football. Those are the only th- those are the only three guys? There should be more announced. Too. Cooper Cup was a 98. Yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's a travesty. And they had him. Yeah. Yeah. There should be more coming out as the days go on. Interestingly enough, Amari Cooper was a 90. Debo Samuel, 89. Yeah. Wow. Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase was an 87. Jamar Chase? Yeah. He's pissed off. He's, he's mad pissed about, off about it? it? Oh, yeah. He's mad about it. He said it's motivation. Oh, yeah. Well, didn't you see what's his name respond to him? Tom Brady? Oh, what did he say? Don't worry about it. They didn't even have me in the game my second year. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Tom Brady's so goaded. Tom Brady told Jamar Chase that. No sweat. They didn't even have me in the game my second year. Then they put him in the game as number one, two, and had a 41 awareness. No. Yeah, he, he tweeted about that, too. He was like, a 41 awareness? Come on, man. <laughs> oh, that's so good. He said, he's, he's, he, tweeted, so he said, 41 in there, awareness, just just unnecessary mean. Unnecessarily mean. His his rating was a his quarterback name was quarterback number one two overall fifty seven speed fifty strength fifty nine awareness forty one. 
This was, what year was this? And all these guys play the game, so they get really upset about this. Oh, yeah. The NBA yeah. players get mad, yeah. super upset about the 2K stuff. There are certain guys that don't play the game because of it. Because of, the, because of how bad they are on the, the game? Rating, yeah, how the rating is. Yeah. I know guys. <laughs> I know really good guys that hate the game. Really? Yes. That don't play 2K because of their rating? Yeah. And they have amazing ratings in the game. But, they, like, but they think that they should be higher should be than higher. other guys? Like, how did I miss that? I make that all the time. Like, you know, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of thing. Like, I make that eight out of ten times. Uh, right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to check in with Rob Fisher, who is uh, down in Atlanta while Lane Kiffin and I guess today Nick Saban making waves. Saying what they're saying. We'll get caught up to date on everything we need to know about SEC Media Days. Fish is going to check in with us on the other side. Chris Farnan, show. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10-minute oil change. It's a Grizzlies game day. It's a big day. Mm -hmm. Grizzlies game day, Grizzlies at Nuggets, opening day in Major League Baseball, Masters day one. Did we ever think we were going to see Tiger Woods on a golf course again? You didn't even mention the real sport coming back today. It's kickball season again. Let's go! I see the joy in his eyes for kickball season to begin. Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Live daily at 8 a.m. on GrindCityMedia.com. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience. Keep track of a team with news, social media, and team information. Plus, you can log into Grind City Media for articles, videos, podcasts, and streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can see what's going on at FedEx Forum and use the app as your ticket and mobile wallet for contact-free payment in the arena. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Taco Bell has all the classic flavors you're craving. Order them ahead on the Taco Bell app for quick pickup in the drive-thru or get them delivered right to your door. Are you a true Taco Bell fan? Join our team and eat for free, plus score flexible hours, scholarships, and more. Apply at jobs.tacobell.com today. Hours and participation may vary by location. Additional terms and fees may apply. Franchisees are independent operators and are responsible for their own employment practices and benefits. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamar, Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. What's up, y'all? This is Chase Rice hanging outdoors with an ice-cold Mountain Dew. You know, it's easy to tell who really loves the outdoors. One thing, there's a rack on your car and a hitch on the back of your truck. There's a garage full of toys from wakeboards to dirt bikes. And there's a cooler full of Mountain Dew, always at the ready. Because when it's time to get out and do, you know, hit the lake or the deer stand, a cooler of Mountain Dew, that's as important a piece of outdoor gear as your four-wheeler or your fishing rod. Mountain Dew. Do the do. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page. Presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. You think you know what's going on? Your love's on fire, but he's a liar. I think you just got played. Played like a backwoods fiddle. At an Alabama hoedown. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon Show. And let's head down to Atlanta, Georgia. Our buddy Rob Fisher is there for SEC Media Days. He's been taking it all in. What's up, Fish? 
What's going on, man? All right, so... Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great, okay. right? All right, it's, good. It seemed as if... Now, I, I, I can't... I can only gauge from what I'm... I, I take it from how the media reacts to everything, but it seems as if Lane Kiffin was by far the most interesting yesterday because he got up on the podium and basically said, like, you know, it's kind of a... Uh, I, I feel like these guys are, like doing the subtle messages to their own <laughs> boosters and fundraising by saying like, hey, the people with the most money are the ones that are going to have the best players. And so when I don't win the SEC West, like, it's not my fault. <laughs> like, if you want to have, yeah. have all the best players, then everybody's got to start ponying up a lot more money. In fact, someone on the low told me that that's what Saban was actually doing when he got in all that mess with Jimbo. It wasn't really a shot at Jimbo as much as it was him being upset like, hey, if you want to win on that level, like, look at what his guys are doing for him. And so it was kind of like this passive-aggressive message to their own boosters. <laughs> but right. it feels like that's kind of just what's going on right now. And it feels like, maybe I'm wrong, but... Was NIL as big a story as anything yesterday in terms of what people were talking about and what people cared about? It's been the biggest story not only yesterday, but today so far. We've already heard from three coaches, Nick Saban, Clark Lever, Vanderbilt, and Mike Leach just uh, got done talking uh, as well. And all of them were talking about NIL. And, yeah, it started yesterday really Lane Kiffin had the best comments regarding it, talking basically saying we've now allowed cheating in college football. And whoever has the most money compared it to professional sports, whoever has the most, but most money will have the best teams. And uh, so, yeah, I think it is a message. And you're 100% right. That's what Nick Saban was doing with Jimbo Fisher. It wasn't a matter of being upset with Jimbo Fisher as much as it was just getting the message out to his boosters up if we're going to win, we have to spend the money. I mean, Saban made it clear. He started his press conference today saying that his guys made over $3 million last year uh, in, in, uh, in NIL deals and that they were the, one of the most productive teams when it came to NIL deals. He also said, you know, con raised his concerns about what's wrong with college football and, and what's wrong with the NIL. And all the coaches seem to have the same sort of uh, message over the last couple of days, and that's there's just no governing of the NIL. It's just wide open. Mike Leach just got done saying, you know, if you went to an NFL guy and said, all right, here's the deal. We have open free agents for all players, and also there's no draft. It's just going to be a bidding war for guys, and there's no salary cap. The reaction you'd get from someone in the NFL would be, well, that's crazy. Well, that's where college football is right now, and that's where coaches are concerned. I think they all just, frankly, need to shut up. I mean, they, they complained and whined for years that players needed to be paid. They needed to be compensated. They were being taken advantage of. Now, all of a sudden, they're being paid, and now we, we, we're, we're screaming that it's not fair because the haves are going to become bigger, and the have-nots will become less. Well, that's what we've been going through for the last three decades. Nothing has changed other than players are now benefiting, and I think we just need to let it go. Well, I and look, here's the problem. It's that the NCAA fought this instead of governing it. You know, this is always the problem. It's kind of like, you know, when the, when the government, you know, let's just say, for instance, like uh, cryptocurrency, right? It's a big thing. It's wild, wild west right now. Inevitably, what's going to happen is the Federal Reserve is going to come in. They're going to adopt cri cryptocurrency. They're going to call it an asset. There's a couple of them that are going to survive, and then they're going to regulate the whole thing. Instead, they fought the whole way. Every time you take the NCAA to court, they lose. And then you look up, and there's nobody. It's like, all right, do what you want to do. And it's like instead of having some kind of a structure – and saying, like, okay, here's what's kosher, here's what's not kosher. Like, there is, no, there is no rule of law to any of this. And I do think that some level of regulation, but I'm sure that the NCAA, like, they don't want any part of it, it, regulating anything anymore because every time they get their ass kicked, they go to court, right. they lose literally every time they make their arguments, they lose. And so now this is... 
this is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, good luck. I think the NCAA smart on the deal. They're, they wipe their hands of it. I've been saying this for three decades, man. I mean, that's how old I am. I've been saying this for 30 years that they should allow. They All they needed to do to help fix the NCAA was allow one rule, and that's allow student athletes to work. And essentially, that's what they're doing right now. And the NCAA can wipe their hands clean of the whole deal. This comes down to IRS issues. This comes down to... I guess some morality issues for some coaches and some universities. But other than that, it has nothing to do with the NCAA anymore. And I think that's how the NCAA wants it to be. You wanted athletes to be compensated. Now they're being compensated. We have nothing to do with it. This is on you. We wash our hands of it. I think it's perfect for the NCAA. And, and, and the bottom line is coaches who are whining and complaining about putting in regulations and putting in some sort of salary cap, capping what a player can make, Okay, well, as soon as we're capping what a player can make and Bryce Young's at that cap, who's to say that someone's not going to cheat and give them more money? I mean, it, it, as long as we put rules on it, there will be cheaters. That's mm-hmm. what's happened for years in college athletics. Why wouldn't it continue to happen? I like the way it is. Let these athletes make whatever they can make of their own name, image, and likeness. Let them be the ones that have to worry about tax purposes, IRS, things of that nature. And then let NCAA worry about something that they've said worried about for so many years and have it. Let them worry about actual kids going to school. Let them regulate kids actually going to school and passing grades and working towards a degree. Maybe that's something. Then they could come back and start calling them student athletes again and not feel like hypocrites. Yeah, it's been a business for the coaches, and that's the only person. That's the only people it's been a business for for so long. And I do think that what we've seen, and you'll continue to see this, the bloodletting of the coaches in college basketball, it will eventually come for football, where the guys just say, all right, I'm just going to go and try to coach professionally. But the basketball is even worse because it starts so much younger and there's, so, and there's fewer players. Um, right. So that one's really tough. But these guys have had it their way, the way they've done it for so many years, and now it's like, you know, I, I, the, only, the only time that I do uh, – have some level of empathy is on the recruiting thing because that has been such a massive part of the job and outworking your opponents and being great at recruiting and offering these kids the best of best. And the idea that somebody comes in and just said, I've spent a lot of time on somebody. Somebody just says, Hey, we'll give you 300 grand. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it has right. in that sense, that has changed things dramatically uh, from what, the way that job has been for since the beginning of time, right? It's going to kids' games on Friday night. It's developing relationships with the parents and the and the sister and the girlfriend and the like. I do empathize on that level only. You know what I mean? I, I want everybody to get whatever they're worth, but I don't know in terms of deciding who's the best recruiters and that that being like a real advantage. You staffing up. To have the best, I don't really know if it matters. Honestly, if I do have the biggest bankroll, I'm going to win. I'm going to win recruiting, and, and that's that. That's how you win recruiting. It's not a talent. It's not your level of persuasion. It's not what you offer. It is simply money. And I'm cool with it, man. Yeah. And the reason I and the reason I'm cool with it is look where we're heading in college football right now. We're going to have two mega conferences that are each going to have 24 teams in them. Who cares about the other 100 teams that, that are out there? All that's going to matter are these 48 teams that are going to be in this division, in this conference, in this in, in this world of college football. You're going to have 48 halves, and the rest are going to be have-nots. And yeah, if Vanderbilt's getting screwed, too bad. You're lucky you're in this thing. If, if, if Alabama getting screwed because they didn't spend enough money, well, as Nick Saban has pointed out, it's their booster's fault. And it's it, Texas A&M outbids for a guy. This is the way it's going to be. We finally have got rid of the hypocrisy of saying that this is amateurism and amateur athletics. It truly has become professional. And the more we get more realignment, more expansion, get these mega conferences and weed out everybody else, it becomes even more professional. And now they're bidding against each other. And that's going to be the business of professional college football. And that's where we're heading. All right. So tell me about Sankey and kind of, 
how he made it sound in terms of the future of football, um, the whole Texas Oklahoma thing, and then kind of the fallout from that, and what what's going to happen all around them, like. Once you got done listening to Sankey, what did you think the SEC and college football is going to look like in three or four years? Because you just briefly mentioned you thought two 24-team uh, leagues or something like that. Just explain to me what you're talking about. Well, I, I think Greg Sankey kind of disappointed in, in his comments yesterday because from what I hear and from, what I, from the people I've talked to, the goal for Greg Sankey was to take the podium yesterday and not make a news story. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't make a news story. He was asked, the first question he was asked was about Oklahoma and Texas coming to the conference sooner than 2025. And he said, that's up to them. That's up to the big 12. And then he quickly just moved on from it. As far as the expansion, he made it very clear that it's not over. Uh, he made it clear that, there will be more. He just doesn't know where it's going to be going or that they're always listening. But let's let's be honest. I mean, the Big 12 can add whoever they want. They're not going to be on the same plane as the 10 or the SEC. And I would think if you're Clemson, if you're Florida State, Miami, uh, Oregon, Washington, uh, maybe the only team I'm, I'm going to leave out is Notre Dame because it seems like they're still okay on their own. But everybody else has to be just hoping to try and get into one of these two conferences. That has to be their main goal. So I don't think it's stopping. I don't think it's stopping anytime soon. I think we'll have these two conferences get up to, well, as many as they want. Because now they can pick and choose who they want. And people would be silly not to go join the SEC. So I expect that we'll have mega conferences. The SEC, the Big Ten, maybe there's a third if they can get enough uh, a participation from those other conferences now that are left barren, but but I don't think you can because who cares about Arizona State? Who cares about Oregon State? They just don't move the needle, and everything now is about moving the needle. I came away from Greg Sankey basically believing they think there needs to be more regulation on NIL. They believe that there needs to be... Um, well, it doesn't need to be regulation on how far we're expanding these these conferences he just may sound like this is the beginning of a, of a long process and it's something that's not going to end do you think that do you get any impression that he cares about the rest of college athletics do you think all of these guys are just looking out for themselves i always felt like god rest his soul mike slive had a real soft spot for because of where he had come from including right. i mean i met mike when he was the commissioner of conference usa Right. And so he had come from Conference USA prior to. And so he always had he always, you know, I, I felt like many times he talked, obviously, he was going to do what was best for his conference. But he also had an awareness of the way the rest of the world worked, you know, and yeah. it seems like right now everybody has been incentivized to only care about themselves and making sure that their thing is fine rather than, you know, the greater good. And like you were saying, what happens to the other 100 schools if we're going to do this mega conference thing and whatever else, right? Is all the money then piled in to all those schools? Like what? I, I really, it's hard for me to envision how this plays out over the years. Yeah, I, I, I have a feeling just being around here, and it's not just this week and this year, but years past, this is as close to the NFL as you get. And when I say that, what I mean is, there is no care about anybody else. There is, it, it's, we do it on our schedule. We want the power. It's all about the power. And with power comes all the money. And with all the money comes the success that the SEC is going to have. I don't think they care about the other programs. Now, on the record, I'm sure they'd say they do. And they feel bad for those programs. But really, the only person who has made mention of any other programs around the country has been Nick Saban when he talked about the haves and the have-nots and Alabama being one of the haves, and he said, we don't have a problem with it. But what it hurts is all these other programs. Now, Nick Saban, sure, he cared about all the others, yet today when he was asked about playing a Jackson State maybe in a non-conference game, he, he's always an advocate of in-state schools and in-state games. He's been in Alabama for 15 years. He's never played one. 
He talked, not, not one. I mean, he, he s- sat there and talked about, yeah, we want to have the in-state schools and help them build up and it makes them better and it's financially better for them and that's what we want to do. He's never played one. Not one time. It's in not like he's got years. UAB on their schedule? No. I yeah. mean, the guy just flat out just lied. I mean, yeah. so it, it's not about the others. It's, it's, it's about us. And, man, there can't be a more excited program in America than Vanderbilt. When the dust settles, Vanderbilt is in this mega conference and making the money that all these other programs are doing. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All right. So who has the buzz been about? We know the usual suspects, and we know that there's Alabama and Georgia, and we expect them to be up there with Clemson and Ohio State and Oklahoma, USC, like all the same, right? Like, But, like, is it A&M? Who, who are people, like, buzzing about, like, hey, if someone's going to break down this whole – Bama Georgia thing and the fact that they are like right there at the top of the recruiting rankings and awesome every single year that if someone's gonna bust down the door who is it the buzz around here this week has been about one team it's Tennessee what Tennessee a team that they're over under is at seven and a half okay. this season I mean but a lot of people believe they could be the second best team in the east Maybe even give Georgia a scare. Uh, schedule maybe being a little favorable. I, one person today mentioned that he thinks that Tennessee is the toughest game on Alabama's schedule <laughs> this year. Wow. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. I it, It's Alabama and Georgia, and, and every year there's that chic kind of fun pick. And you know, last year it was A&M, and what did they do? They go 4-4 four and four in conference. So when, it's, when you got two dogs like Alabama and Georgia at the top, it's really just talking about who's finished second, and I don't even think any of those programs, Tennessee or any of the others, can give those teams a scare. What about Brian Kelly, Buzz? That's the one I was interested in is Brian, because Brian Kelly is a great coach. You know they got players. And yeah. You know Orgeron left it stocked. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and Brian, Brian Kelly is a good coach. They had a big exodus of players after the bowl game last year, before mm. the bowl game last year, so... They did a good, Kelly did a decent job of filling in some of those holes to transfer portal in the offseason. But, you know, he's got big question at quarterback. He's got great skill players that he's got. Uh, his lines are good. They just lost a lot of depth because of transfers, and he's going to have to fill those holes. And I guess being a new coach and not having a quarterback, at least at this point, uh, that's where you raise the questions for LSU. But I'm with you. I, I think LSU still finishes top three in the West. I'd be surprised if they don't. In fact, I, I think LSU is the second best team in the West. Is ten, is the reason Tennessee people are buzzing about him? I know people are like typo of what he's done there so far, but the hooker thing, I mean, the kid was yeah. obviously awesome once they put him in. The, when they got done with the Joe Milton badness, he kid put up really good numbers last year, hooker, and he looks like a player. Put up ridiculous numbers. Last, I mean, numbers that when you see them, you didn't even think those were. I know. That happened. Uh, I know. Last year, so you're right. But yes, that's where all the excitement is. I mean, he's a dark horse to win the Heisman Trophy. Uh, mm. He's a guy that a lot of people are talking about this week. And I, you know, I think Tennessee was better uh, than expected last year. I thought Josh Heupel, once things got going and they got a little more comfortable, kind of figured out what they wanted to do offensively, they showed flashes of just being a different looking team. So maybe a year into it, a year into that system, maybe that's something that can really help them this year. So. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm buying it. Ask me again at the end of the week or ask me again at the end of camp, and maybe I will look at Tennessee a little differently, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I, like Saban talked about with college football, I think there are haves and have nots. And to me, there are only two halves in this entire conference. What's the buzz on the Billy Napier thing? Because Billy Napier was, he did a damn good job, and now he's got that Florida job, which is a totally different animal. Yeah. I, well, I think there are two things. One, looking forward to seeing him. He's going to be here. Uh, tomorrow uh, to speak uh, here at SEC Media Day. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him for the first time. The biggest thing for him is, much like uh, Ryan Kelly, even more so, Dan Mullen didn't do anything recruiting, and the cupboard is bare uh, mm. at Florida. He lost a lot of players. He's got to replace a lot of guys. He's got to build that roster, get back up to 85 uh, somewhere that they were nowhere close when the season ended last year. So they got to build that roster back up. But they believe that they have a great quarterback, something that uh, Dan Mullen really wasn't able to muster out of Florida, despite the fact that he was kind of a quarterback whisperer 
before he got to the Gators. But Billy Napier's got a heck of a quarterback. And you know, like you said about LSU, they are they got players. They got talent on that roster. Now it's just a matter, uh, a matter of filling that roster up. I think Coach Napier will be tough here in year one, but they got enough talent to be competitive for sure. Who uh, I, I did see Lane Kiffin signed a, a bottle of mustard uh, yeah. for some for some fans. Some fan handed him a bottle of mustard. What is what's the deal with Ole Miss this year? Who's the quarterback? Uh, well, to transfer from USC, uh, Jackson Bart. Uh, who oh, played, uh, that's right. That uh, happened so games. long ago. Yeah, yeah. Played yeah. some games at USC, and then they have their sophomore uh, campus, who's the own, uh, who's going to battle for the job. So it's really a two-man race, and and I guess I I think they hope darts the guy, or uh, it, or he's expected to be the guy at this point. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens because uh, the other guy that they have is more of a Matt Corral type, more of a, a running type that they'd like to put in there, but uh, not sure if he's ready. At least he wasn't after spring. So Dart looks like he'll be the quarterback, but it's still a two-man race and will be in the fall. Amazing quarterback name, for sure. Amazing. Dart? Yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing. That's an amazing quarterback yeah. name. Well, uh, a, little, a little bit better than Florida's quarterback, Aaron Richardson, who – uh, where's number 15 and his I nickname saw. was AR15. Yeah, I saw that he doesn't want now, that anymore. That's now out. Yeah, he yeah. said no more, no more. I will say the team we might we might be sleeping on and we probably need to watch out cuz the quarterback position does matter so much is pro- pro- out of the west at least or is Arkansas. Oh yeah. They got that the kid, quarterback. They kid's got, awesome. Yeah, that kid's good. KJ Jefferson, he's fun to watch, man. And there are other teams yeah. in that in that division outside of Bama that there's questions about the quarterback position and Arkansas doesn't have those questions. Yeah, let me ask you, Fish, did any uh any players make an impression on you yesterday? Like either great personalities or somebody looked uh, you know, maybe maybe bigger than you thought or smaller than you thought, you know, any observations from the players that were all there? Bryce Young, he's I mean he's he's a decent size and just a really smart kid. I mean I mean his his IQ is off the charts. Um, just when you speak, uh, you, you're you're speaking to a a good man adult. When, when you talk to Bryce Young, an adult. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what that's what he comes across as. Uh, so he was great in everything that he did yesterday, and and he was a little bit bigger than I thought. You know, Matt Corral was a lot smaller than I thought the first time that I saw him. Yep. Bryce Young a little bit bigger than I thought the first time that I have been up close to him. Yeah, he's probably the one that stood out yesterday. Um, you know, and I'm looking forward to seeing Will Levis. I want to see Will Levis. Everybody's so high on Will Levis. I want to see what he looks like, how big he is. Um, and, and we got a couple of other quarterbacks, a lot of quarterbacks coming in over the next couple of days. Do have a lot of quarterbacks that are coming in, right? Yeah, yeah. we call we call uh, just, we call him Will Levi's. Levi's? Yeah, I like it better. He should get an endorsement, too. He should get an endorsement from them, right? NIL world. From Levis? Yeah, Will Levis Levi's. jeans? Yeah. <laughs> just start, well, you yeah. Remember, right? Remember when like, he needs to start calling himself Will Levi's, just like uh, yeah. Joe Thiesman started calling himself Joe Thiesman. So That's right. Could, That's so, right. So he could win the trophy, right? Makes, makes a lot of sense. We'll, uh, and we'll see KJ Jefferson tomorrow. Stedman Bennett's going to be here. I'm going to try and make him cry. Yep. So uh, that's going to be fun. Was, was Mike Leach funny? No. The, the funny, I mean, today's been boring as hell. Uh, Leach came up. The best thing about Mike Leach is he goes up on the podium. Clark Lee of Vanderbilt today used 2,000. 340 words in his opening statement. What? 2,340. Now, compare that to Lane Kiffin used 120 yesterday. Nick Saban used 1339. He went over 2,300 words in his opening statement. Mike Leach's opening statement was, okay, any questions? (laughs) That's it. I love it. I love it. I tell you this, Charlie Lee or Clark Lee, Clark Char- Lee, Clark Lee. Yeah, he could walk in here right now, and I'm not sure I'd know. No, no chance. No. no. You you would think he's the guy from? Do you watch Barry on HBO? I, I'm aware of I, I'm aware of the show. The y- young guy, the bald guy. <laughs> I don't know him. On on Barry, but he's that's on who Clark Lee. Looks like yeah. So you yeah. might think it's him if he walked into the room right now, but you wouldn't think it's the Vanderbilt. Coach. He was the funniest. Because he was talking today about how they are on aggression to make Vanderbilt the strongest football program in the country. Yeah. Wait, what? 
Wait, yeah. Wait, actual yeah. words he said. Yes, that? Yes, sir, yesterday when we yeah. were going through it, I said yeah. his quarterback's name is Mike Wright. I can't. I can't think of anything more forgettable than Vanderbilt <laughs> with Clark Lee as coach and Mike Wright yeah. as quarterback. Like it just. That's right. Everything about. Everything about him is forgettable. Yes. That is just eleven o'clock JP game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are. They have lost twenty. 21 straight SEC games they've lost. No. They haven't won an SEC game in two and a half years. Yeah, <laughs> 21 straight no, SEC de- no games. No Tennessee, no Kentucky, no nothing. Uh, I guess Kentucky's been good. Yeah. Yeah, in the last two years, it went 0 for a COVID year. They went 0 and 9. <laughs> last year, they went 0 and 8 and lost their last four or three years ago. So 21 straight, he was asked about that. He said, we don't worry about that. Oh, word? <laughs> Damn. So, All right, so hey, you know, last, doors, man. La- last thing, Fisk, because I do need to know this. Whose schedule sucks? Like, who is the team that, like, people are like, eh, I think they're going to be good, but their schedule, right? Like, who's, who's the ones that everybody's saying? I know you mentioned Tennessee. Like, they've got, a, uh, they've got a schedule that seems real manageable. Does anybody have one that just seems like death? It's Arkansas every year, man. Damn. I don't know why it turns out this way. But it's, but it's Arkansas, again, um, that their schedule is going to be really difficult once again. Um, who else? Uh, I guess it, uh, Mississippi State's schedule is really difficult, one of the most difficult in the country uh, this year. Uh, so theirs is going to be very tough. For some reason, the Georgia Bulldogs' schedule seems easy like every, every, every year. It, it's, it, it just sets up for them perfectly. And I think it sets up for Ole Miss this year, too. You know, that's a t- you talk about cross-division teams that they're playing this year. You have Vanderbilt and Kentucky as the cross-division team. So, <laughs> schedule sets up nicely for an Ole Miss team that's kind of having to deal with losing Matt Corral and losing a lot of guys to the NFL and replace them all with transfer, transfer portal guys. So, Ole Miss is an intriguing team this year. Man, I just pulled up that Arkansas one. They start off there. I don't know. They're playing Cincinnati the first <laughs> first game of the season. Why? That's a mistake. And then they've got another non-conference against Liberty. Yep. In the yeah. middle. Yo, know, the their AD conference. is wild for this. Like, <laughs> well, if you're Arkansas, was... you gotta you gotta schedule wins yeah. like as your <laughs> non-conference. This all goes in the people who are upset with Jeff Long, the former AD at Arkansas. He's the one that put these schedules yeah, together. Yes, bananas. That's bananas. Because yeah, look, you get enough wins in your conference. Just play bunny games. Like win, you know, rack yourself up three or four wins from that non conference yes. stuff because you're going to, nobody is going to question your schedule if you win an SEC West schedule. But now Correct. you lose to Cincinnati and Liberty, your ass gets fired. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You got, and you're at, I mean, B, at BYU, too. Oh, where? I'm, at, at BYU. They play at BYU? Arkansas does. In the middle of our Alabama, Mississippi State, at BYU, at Auburn. What is wrong with them? <laughs> this guy's a yeah. maniac. Yeah, what are they <laughs> doing? Play Mercer. <laughs> They've got Missouri State is their other one. Their other three non conference are Liberty, Cincinnati, at, what's that? One loss between those two, yeah, and gosh. then at BYU. and then at BYU. Yeah, I at, mean that, that's crazy. Why are you going <laughs> at BYU? You got to go to Provo in the middle of a SEC schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that guy. That's terrible. <laughs> I mean, that's where you need to get three. I mean, like you said, that's where you yeah. have to get four wins. Chalk up four uh, in your non-conference, and then. You go 500 in the conference, you got eight wins. Anything over is great. Anything under, eh. But, uh, well, man, and then you only got to get two to get bowl. Like at, at least if you get two, yeah. you're bowl eligible. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. I mean, like, if you look at the rest of theirs, so they could, you know, then you beat South Carolina and then. Beat Missouri State. No. You, you try to win one of the, like, you try to win Missouri yeah. or LSU. You know, I mean, you just try to get, you, you try to get two. But, yeah. dude, they're, that guy could do a good job and have a terrible record. Mm-hmm. Well, hell, <laughs> last two years we thought of, him, thought of him as potential coach yeah. of the year in the SEC. I know. And their record has been nothing. I but know. But it's, it's, it's because their schedule's been brutal now for three straight years. Golly, that is rough. All right, Fish, enjoy Atlanta. Have you done anything else besides, outside of media days? Anything fun out on the town? No. Have you sat in traffic? No. 
traffic. No, no traffic wasn't bad actually because there was a soccer game going on when we arrived. So uh, the, the, uh, they were already settled in to the Mercedes Benz Stadium at that point. So traffic wasn't bad. Just been walking around and. Um, Do you like Atlanta? No. You know. I mean, you have to get in a car basically and go anywhere. Like Buckhead to have yourself a good time. Uh, they're downtown. It's not very, not very uh, entertaining. Not very good. All right. No. All right. Well, enjoy your time in Buckhead. <laughs> uh, I'll, I check, I'll check in with you later this week. Thanks, brother. All right, buddy. All you right. got it. All right, Rob Fisher See you, down at SEC Media Days. Damn, we learned something new. We looked at that Arkansas schedule. Yeah, that is tough. Shouts to my Arkansas uh, friends out there. Jesus. Bro, September whoever ske- whoever made that schedule, it, I at mean, least you got games. I guess it's Jeff Long. Every week. That that's that is abhorrent. Blame yeah. Jerry Jones, man. No, this is terrible. That, yeah. Dude, that's shit, bro. Bad. How do you get Cincinnati, BYU, and Liberty on there? <laughs> bro, September twenty fourth, A and M. October first, Bama. October eighth, State. October fifteenth, at BYU. October 29th, at Auburn. Then Liberty for homecoming. LSU. Wait, Ole did Miss. you say Bama and then at BYU? No, Bama, then at Mississippi State. Oh, and then at BYU? Then at BYU. Golly. Why are they playing at BYU? Why are they playing Cincinnati? Yeah, where's the Cincinnati game? It's in Fayetteville. Oh, okay, it's in Fayetteville. I didn't know if that was like like undefeated last year. There was a playoff. I didn't know if that was like a neutral side or something. I know they lost their quarterback and they lost Ritter. Desmond Ritter, yeah. Lost a cornerback that's really good, Sauce Gardner. Yeah, Sauce Gardner. They lost some guys, but still. It's still Cincinnati. Their coach didn't leave. Yeah, Yeah, their coach did not leave. Which is like the shock of the Yeah. He must know he got got players. He's still there. Also, the last time that uh, Vanderbilt won a conference game, do y'all know who it was? I looked it up. Did some deep dives. Tennessee. It was not Tennessee. Missouri. Kentucky. It was Missouri. They beat Missouri 21 to 14 on October 19, 2019. I wonder if that's what got Odom fired. Very <laughs> Odom. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Losing to Vanderbilt, bro, yes. They haven't won a conference game since. What was the score? 21-14. to 14. <laughs> I will say I do have a Heisman bet already. On who? Uh, Ohio H- State. Hendon Hooker. Ohio State running back Travion Henderson. What the got heck? On him. He was like 35-1. to 1. 35 And he's one. awesome. Really? Right, He's awesome. Let me see. Let me see what that. Uh, since he said there's a, all this buzz on Hooker, you know all them guys at UCF put up big numbers. Yeah. So it'd be unsurprising if the Hooker, uh, the Hooker kid's numbers in a limited time last year were crazy. You can get Hendon Hooker at forty to one. Forty to one. Yeah, the favorite is C.J. Stroud from Ohio State, the quarterback. He's plus two fifty. Bryce Young is plus three fifty. Caleb Williams, that's the quarterback of USC now. He's plus 700. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. I see it. Caleb Williams. If you think a defensive player player can win it, Will Anderson at 20 to 1. Because Will Anderson from Bama might be the best overall football player in the country. Who's the guy that's going to play for Lincoln Riley at USC? That's Caleb Williams. Williams. That's Caleb Williams. Oh, okay. Well, they're saying that they've got the most bets for national title or whatever. Yeah, USC, beast. people are going and betting USC like crazy. Because I guess they figure they got some players. They got a quarterback in Lincoln Riley. There's a lot of love for Lincoln Riley. People have very uh, high thoughts about him and what he's going to be able to do there. Yeah, it says Dylan Gabriel's on there, too, the kid from UCF that went to Oklahoma. Your guy Spencer Rattler's yeah. plus 5,500. South Carolina, baby, turn up. You know I've been following them like crazy. Turn up. USC, baby. There's that Jackson Dart at 60 to 1. Yeah, I want to try to find out if he's fast. They said he's kind of fast. Where's Keaton Slovis now? Uh, Where did he transfer to? Where's Bo Nix? I see him on here. <laughs> he went to Oregon, I think. What? Wait, he did? Bo oh, Nix yeah. is in Oregon? He is the quarterback for the Oregon Ducks. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, Bo Nix went to Oregon. Oh, I love this name. Keaton Slovis went to Pittsburgh. I love this name. This guy's got a good name. Cameron Rising? That's a great oh, name. That is Where's a, he? Is he a receiver? If I don't good, know, but his name's Cameron Rising. He's plus 8,000. He plays at Utah, bro. Oh, he, he has an amazing beard and an amazing long. He has long hair. Is he the? Is he quarterback? Quarterback, yeah. Yeah, Utah. he's a quarterback. Yeah. Cameron Rising. Yo, you should see a photo of this dude. Yeah. His hair is amazing. 
Oh, yeah. He's got a good headline name, too. Cameron Rising. <laughs> Cameron rises up to the occasion. You like that? Yeah, we're, uh, Quinn Ewers. I know that name. That's Quinn the Ewers. kid who's that's in Ohio. A, oh, he's, that's Ohio State? No, he was, and he transferred back to Texas. He's the kid with the mullet who was the big-time five-star prospect. Oh, he went to, yeah. He went to Ohio State. C.J. He's Stroud, in Texas? C.J. Stroud beat him out, oh. and he transferred back to Texas. So now he's got to keep that seat warm for bro, Arch. He, bro, he made, over a mil, he made like a million dollars in NIL going to Ohio State and didn't even play. Quinn like million, Ewers. Yeah, made like a million dollars. That? Yeah, I remember those videos of him. Yeah, he's got the he's mullet. He's the guy with the yeah. big mullet, the big blonde mullet. I remember yeah. his videos. What did, he uh, looks, oh, he's going to be a friggin' hero in Texas. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, Dude, the they're going to love the Put big. Put the cowboy hat on top of oh, it? Oh, my goodness. They're oh. going to love the big blonde mullet guy. You will never believe, but Alabama is plus 180 to win the national championship. Good. Where's Richardson on that list? Uh, Ohio. Low. He's, yeah. He was plus 4,000. Ohio yeah. State is plus 300, and Georgia is plus 400. Of course. The Clemson's usual, usual 10 to one. suspects. Uh, by the way, I have some. Uh, What's USC? USC is twenty-five to one. Yeah, they're catching. They're catching some bets. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you get through the Pac-12 undefeated, right? You gotta get a look and get your ass kicked by Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? Uh, so Dan Patrick was on, just on his show. I uh, saw this talking about the Charles Barkley situation. A live, live. It says Dan Patrick says he was told by Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, he may need to leave TNT if he joins Live Golf. Wow. So and he's that meeting be the with thing Liv, that breaks yeah. up. And he's meeting tomorrow night with Liv. That's going to be the big thing that breaks up inside the NBA. Live Golf. Not everybody's going to hate him, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I saw? I, I, don't know, the, I, hey, I don't know if you saw that quote earlier, but, you know, when people can hate the messenger all they want, and Lord knows people, there's a lot of people that hate Donald Trump, but Donald Trump was asked about it, and this is what he said. You can take it for what it's worth. I actually think we're going to look back, and he's going to be right about this. He said, all of those golfers that remain loyal to the disloyal PGA are going to pay a big price when the inevitable merger with Liv comes, and you get nothing but a big thank you from PGA officials. Ooh. That's what he said. Yeah. That's tough. I mean, look, I think he's going to end up being right because at some point, you know what's going to happen. What rules all of these sports? Money. TV. Oh, yeah. yeah, TV. Because that's where the money is. Yeah. Yes. And so TV is going to come in and be like, yo, uh, we've got this deal with you. We want all the best players playing here. This weekend. That's what we paid for. Yeah. So figure something out. Yeah. Your way of this thing being broken into two, it hasn't worked. Well, that's even the hard part. And in part, fact, yes. it's getting worse and worse for us. Well, that, so the deal we signed is not the deal that is being lived up to. So figure this out. And so that's where Trump's right, because these guys that now have gone and taken all this guaranteed money, the the ones that have stuck it out. The PG is going to be like, hey, thanks for your loyalty. It's going to be like, wait, what? I could have left and gotten a fortune. Yeah. And then still been a part of what inevitably is going to take place. Because they're not going to just split and compete. No. And the other thing, too, is as you Jeez, said with the television man. contracts, like they could do the thing where they can try after, because now the majors are over. And they can do it where they can say, no, no, you guys that play and live, you're not going to be eligible to play in the majors. But if these dudes just keep taking the money and going over there, bro, these – Television companies that of course pay they are. for the majors like, yo, why do we pay this much for a major when the best players aren't even here now? Yep. Every place. Yeah. Every place is going to say that. Yeah. Yep. They're going to do it for in-person attendance. They're going to do it for TV ratings. They're going to do it. And so that's why when Trump was asked about it, he said that because he knows the way this stuff works. Yeah. The way this stuff works is not that it's just going to break up and it's going to be two competings. It's going to be like eventually they're just going to have to say, Okay, let's play ball with you. Yep. We, because now they've done they've done this hard line, and it hasn't worked. And so that's why he said he his point was all these guys that are like saying I'm loyal to this. That's what you're gonna get for your loyalty. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for being loyal. A nice little message. Do you remember I told yeah. you months ago Rory was caught on that hot mic, and he's 
basically saying like we we got to figure out like the way that this needs to play out. This is after the Phil stuff, and yeah. Rory's been the most outspoken. But he also on that hot mic was saying. The thing to do would be, how do we get the... Here's all this money being spent in golf. How do we get this money involved here? Like, this is happening either way. So instead of competing with it, yeah. why don't we get it all in the same pot so that all we're all benefiting from it? it and instead, very, they wanted to do... They, they got their chest out way too far on this, yeah. and they, they thought... That whole legacy BS was going to rule the day. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of these guys that are rich, for sure, right? Old rich white guys love the legacy stuff. They but do bro, love, stuff. Love, it. <laughs> love it. But, bro, if they go to Cam Smith and they say, yo, Cam, we'll give you $90 million. Say less. You what know how I much sign? he just made for winning the British Open? 2.5. Oh, yeah, he's a rat. Yeah. He's, on, he's gone. We're going to give you 90 just to come over right now. And it's less guys, less competition. Yeah, I'm going to holler at y'all. Deuces. I mean, look, the, the dam has been broken now for a long, uh, you know, for weeks and weeks and months. Yeah. And they're saying it's going to be a super bloodletting, for lack of a better Once term. Once the playoffs end? Yes. It's already happening now that major season ends. Yeah. Major season was the first one. Well, you see Henrik Stenson went yesterday, and people could say, well, who gives a crap about Henrik Stenson? Henrik Stenson is the friggin' captain of the European Ryder Cup team. Yeah. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, okay, take my captaincy. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll take the $50 take, million. Yeah, I'll take the yeah. $50 million. The check's still going to clear. Instead buddy. of yeah. getting all that money involved in the PGA Tour, they wanted to be like, nah. They wanted to we should stick the boy, they, boy, did they, boy, did they pick the wrong fight. Yeah. yeah. They picked the wrong well, they, fight. They, they and then they, stuck, then they drew a line in the sand and said, you can't do both. You can, I tell you, I mean, I had a guy tell me when this first came up, he said, they want you to be an independent contractor until yeah. oh. it doesn't benefit them. Because yeah. they're not in a union. There's yeah. not a player's association. They're independent contractors. But you're an independent contractor that can only do that because they've got the power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why these guys stood up, and they're like, yeah, to hell with you. The, well, the PGA Tour Cash pick, rules everything they're, around They're me. picking a fight with someone who has more money than they do. That's what I'm saying. Cash rules everything around me, Nine. man. Get the money. Yeah. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. I got, I got a fun fact for y'all before we get out of here. Did Please. y'all know? I love fun facts. You know yes. I love fun facts, too. Nobody do y'all know who is the facts. sixth highest paid player on the Cincinnati Reds? Oh, my God. Joey? Zach Cozart. <laughs> is he retired? <laughs> Former Ole Miss <laughs> legend. It is not uh, Aaron Dunn. Joey Votto. It is not Joey Votto. It is uh, Skyline Brandon Chili. Brandon Phillips. It is not Brandon Phillips. I know Phillips. Skyline Chili. Skyline Eric Skyline Davis. This guy's Let's a see how many Reds you can name. Chris <laughs> Sabo. Oh, wow. Johnny Bench. <laughs> Joe Morgan. <laughs> this guy's a Hall of Famer, by the way. Oh, oh then it's clearly Bronson Arroyo. <laughs> 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 Bronson Arroyo, <laughs> Reggie Sanders. Oh, I love the Reggie Sanders. Man, That's a good take call. that, take that. <laughs> That's a good one. Sean Casey. <laughs> Sean Casey. Oh, get some. Oh. So Rosenberg says Bay Larkin. Tyler right? Stevenson. Get that George Foster. <laughs> get that Tony Perez. Tony Perez. Barry Larkin, shout out. Yeah, Barry. God, how did we not name Barry Larkin? Shout out. Yeah, I don't not name Barry Larkin. Barry Larkin's an old time great. Yeah, yeah, it's a Hall of Famer. But the sixth highest paid player on the Cincinnati Reds on the 2022 payroll is Ken Griffey Jr. Wait, he's still getting paid? Yes. Did you see him last night? Taking photos. Just like you. Yeah, no, right. He's taking photos Locked just in. like you. Locked he in, had baby. that big telescope ass camera. <laughs> yeah, nobody's seen the photos though. No. <laughs> He, I guess he's a professional uh, photographer now. Yeah, Did he just get through. one of those like Bobby Bonilla deals at the end? They just were like, all right, we're going to stretch it all out so and just this pay is the, you. So this is what happened. So he signed the deal in 2000. It was a nine-year, $112.5 million contract in the year 2000. And they prorated it they out. They deferred the payment from 2009 to 2024. That's awesome. How so much? Uh, Each year. He gets paid, is it $6 million per $3.6 million per year. That's awesome. Good for him. He's living his best life, too. He, he hadn't is. missed meals, has he? No, he's eating good. Kim Jr. doesn't give a crap no more. <laughs> eating burgers. I'm with it. 
I am with it. Yeah, good for him. He ain't the kid no more. He's no. like round, man. Yeah. You're bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's going to do it for today's show. Thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to John Rose across the glass. Thanks to Kimball back in the studio. Thanks to Rob Fisher for joining us from Atlanta. We will be back tomorrow. Until then, we go.